Morning guys, Dave Cabert at the Pathfinder School. What we got right here in front of me is a black walnut tree. And you can see it's starting to get some walnuts that are forming on it right now. They are basically an edible nut, but there are some really good chemical compounds in the black walnut itself and the hull makes a very good brown dye. What we're interested in today is the leaves of the black walnut which just like the hulls are very very astringent in their properties and we're going to use them to make a tincture today in this video so stay with me. Morning guys, Dave Cadbury at the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to discuss with you today would be reasons that you might carry alcohol or moonshine or some type of liquor in your kit and don't get the misunderstanding that I'm promoting that you should carry liquor for the purposes of recreational consumption within your kit because that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that throughout history different types of liquors have been carried by woodsmen and mountain men from the Appalachians all the way to the Rockies for not only medicinal purposes but for other uses like disinfection and fuels. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. We're going to talk about some of the uses of alcohol, what types of alcohol you should or should not carry, how to store those types of alcohol in your kit, and what you can do with those types of alcohol when you have them. So stay with me, guys. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand about carrying alcohol in our kit is that it's always going to be best to carry grain alcohols not wood alcohol or methyl alcohols. We want grain alcohol. So we're talking moonshine. We're talking Everclear. Vodka. Things of that nature are what you want to carry. Good, clear grain alcohols. Those will do you the most multifunctional good as far as carrying something like that in your kit. So let me show you a couple different sources that you can get this type of alcohol and then we'll talk about how to transport it before we talk about how we can best utilize it. Okay, so what I have on this table is I have three different types of green alcohols here. I have just a regular Tennessee moonshine. This is going to be, you know, 100 to 150 proof grain alcohol. So proof means it's going to be half that in percentage of alcohol. So if this was 100 proof, then it would be 50% alcohol. This is a bottle of Everclear. So it's about 75% grain alcohol. This is a Smirnoff 100 proof vodka, which means it's 50% alcohol. Now, if you're going to use this stuff medicinally, which is what you want if you're going to make it multifunctional, you would like to have something at least 60 proof or better. In other words, at least 30% alcohol. If you're going to use it for burning purposes, for starting fire or running at some type of a fuel stove, like an alcohol stove situation, the higher the percentage of alcohol, the better off you're going to be. Everclear is probably going to be the easiest thing for you to get. Moonshine could be a little tougher, but Moonshine and Everclear are going to be pretty close to the same alcohol content by volume. They're going to be, you know, 60 to 75 percent pure grain alcohol for the most part. And then small bottles like this that you can buy at a liquor store of 100 proof Smirnoff vodka will work as well. Now the advantage to these type bottles is these are a plastic like airplane type travel bottle. So they're already in a plastic bottle. You don't have to transfer them into anything else to carry them. And there's enough liquid here to probably run a stove for, you know, a half an hour something like that, but there's not enough alcohol in here really to use for medicinal purposes because you're going to need to mix this with some type of plant material to make your medicine. But for disinfection purposes, and that's another important thing with alcohol, we can disinfect things with alcohol like wounds and cuts. We can also use it as a drying agent on our skin for a rash like poison ivy, but when combined with something to make a tincture, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, it gives you more medicinal power of that alcohol. But for disinfecting instruments like your sail needle, a pair of tweezers, your knife that you're going to have to cut your skin with or something like that to get something out of your skin, an embedded splinter or something like that, 
this much alcohol is fine to carry for that, and any of these alcohols will work fine for disinfection methods. So we've got a multi-purpose item that we can carry, and again, I'm not talking about carrying this for consumption purposes, although you are going to consume drops of this in a tincture, not shot glasses at a time. But you're going to use it for fuel, you're going to use it for disinfection, you're going to use it for fire starting in general, in what conditions, and you can use it for the medicinal values. So let's talk about this a little bit one at a time, give you a demonstration of each of these, and then we can talk further. Alright, so let's take our transient alcohol stove and our moonshine, and we're going to have to, I put a little bit in there already, but we're going to have to let it wick up. So we're going to have to get more in there. We want that thing to wick up in there and then stay about three quarters of the way full. This is a pint jar of Tennessee's best here. Almost there. Just put a little bit more in there and see how much it more wicks. There's a wick inside here. Very much like a penny stove or a Coke can stove that you see on the internet. But these tend to work really, really well. Now we should be able to light this up with our ferrocerium rod or a lighter. So we'll just use the convenient lighter method here. And it burns a very clear flame. So you've really got to be careful because that thing will be on fire and you won't even know it. But I can feel the flame coming off of it so we'll give it a couple minutes here and then we'll Oh yeah, we got to give it a few minutes to draft and get going here and start feeding and then we might be able to see it. Okay, you can see it's starting to fire up a little bit better now. And that's the deal with these alcohol stoves. You really got to watch burning this good clear grain alcohol in there. Is it throws a very, very blue clear flame. You almost don't even know it's on fire and if you put your hand over it, it'll burn the crap out of you. Okay, I've been sitting here for a good 10 minutes, if not more getting other stuff ready for this video and I just left that alcohol thing burning with that corn liquor in there and it's not even phasing the level of how much alcohol is in there at this point so I'd say that thing's going to burn for probably a solid hour if not more I'd have to test it to tell you for sure but it's going to burn for a good long time and that thing is really really hot you're not going to put your hand over that thing I can if my hand is five inches away from that thing I can't hardly stand it to have it over the top of that for just a few seconds so it's burning really really hot which means it's going to be good for cooking your food on so we've got one source for that alcohol is going to be to run an alcohol based type stove okay so all right so i just took a piece of fire brick out of my fire pit at the classroom over there and i'm going to i just took a piece of cotton material out of my backpack and twisted it into like a reverse wrap two ply cordage and I'm just going to take this Everclear and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to go ahead and dip this wick in there and just let that thing wick up some alcohol and you can see it's pulling it right up in there getting pretty damp And then I'm just going to lay it out here on my fire brick. And then I'm going to light this with a ferrocerium rod and a regular striker. Alright, I think you can see the flame coming off of that. Again, that's just a piece of regular cotton material, like bandana type material, that was just soaked down into that Everclear just a little bit. And the bottle's still totally full. It just soaked up enough to get that fabric wet, and that gives me an extended flame that would light in damp weather because of the alcohol, because alcohol is an accelerant, not a fuel. In other words, it will light by fume. The fumes will combust on alcohol. And that gives me a little bit of an extended flame time that I can use to get a stubborn fire lit in inclement conditions. Right, so now that we've opened that bottle of Everclear, it really doesn't matter at this point. I don't want to carry a glass bottle in my backpack anyway if I can help it. 
you can buy these plastic heavy duty ABS plastic flasks at Walmart for about three bucks no different than the plastic bottle that the 100% vodka comes in and I can take this grain alcohol from this glass container and pour it into this plastic container it's got a good o-ring seal on it and that's going to give me a way to transport that alcohol safely so that it's not going to leak into my pack to be able to use for all these multifunctional things okay so we've talked about using this alcohol as a fuel we've talked about using it as an accelerant to start fire and we've talked a little bit about using it to disinfect things in our kit including a cut or a scrape just by wiping it on because it will evaporate but it also is a very good germicide so now let's talk about making something we can use medicinally and we're going to talk about something that's really simple what I've done is I've went out and I found a beer bottle this is just an old brown beer bottle this is the old pop cap type this is a very old beer bottle but it came out of the wildlife area and I've got our black walnut here and all I'm going to do is I'm going to strip the leaves off this and I'm going to jam them in this bottle just like this I don't care anything about the bar or the uh, branch itself or the nuts at this point all I really want are the leaves and I'm going to jam this bottle right to the top with these leaves one branch will definitely get me done beyond a shadow of a doubt Crushing them up on the way in just makes it that much better. Not going to hurt anything. I don't have to get overboard with the maceration of it or trying to destroy them. The alcohol will pull all of that good stuff out. This is a very astringent plant. So it's a very drying plant. It's going to compress the skin cells. And we're going to use this for a poison ivy wash. Which means it's going to be astringently valuable for squeezing those cells of the, on the first layer of your skin or on the outer layer of your skin and kind of push that urosol oil out of there and then that alcohol from the tincture is going to be very drying so it's going to instantly dissipate that oil and dry it. Now this is not the miracle cure-all by any means for poison ivy but it will have a great effect on how long that stuff lasts once you get it in your skin. So we've got that pretty well stuffed. I'm actually overstuffing it just a little bit and that's no big deal. Now, if we had a funnel, that would be ideal, but we don't. So we're going to have to pour directly from our flask or whatever we're using, and we're just going to fill this bottle to the top with alcohol. Now, we don't have to fill it to the top. If we're limited on how much alcohol we have, we can just use what we have if we only have a certain amount left. But I've poured most of that bottle there off into this smaller plastic flask. And I'm going to fill this thing up three quarters of the way. Remember, you've taken a lot of volume up inside here with the leaf matter. So I've got it pretty full now. Now what you want to do with this to make a tincture out of it is you've got to give it time for the chemicals in that plant material to leach out into the alcohol. So you take a dark colored container like this and you're going to have to put a cork on this to keep the alcohol from evaporating. And I just cut a wooden plug. And what I'm going to do is, even if I've got a tight-fitting plug on here, I know I can still get some evaporation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in my kit here. And I almost always carry a cake of fixing wax with me. And I've got one right here. And I'm going to use this fixing wax, which is good medicinally all by itself, to tell you the truth. Stuff we sell on our website. It comes in a cake that looks like this. It's completely edible You're, there's no no toxicity in this whatsoever you can use this for bait for crawfish and things in traps and it works great you can use it directly on your skin it's got vitamin E in it you can use it directly on your lips if you get chapped lips but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push it down in here and use it as a seal to seal this container and I'm just going to smear some down in there real good like that 
and that's going to keep any liquid or alcohol from evaporating out of here. And once I've got that sealed all the way around, the ideal thing to do with this is to let it sit for a couple of weeks. So now what I'll do is I'll take this and put it in the shade somewhere. I don't want to put this in the sunlight. I just soon put it in the shade. Now if I don't have two weeks to wait because I need this stuff immediately, then I'm not going to use the alcohol. I'm just going to make an infusion with the leaves. It's going to be plenty astringent, but I'm not going to have that drying effect of the alcohol. The combination of the alcohol and the astringency of that plant are what make it great for poison ivy, rashes, irritations of the skin, and things like that. Now that I've got sealed up, I'm just going to shake it up really good. And if I'm storing this somewhere in a cool, dry place, like in the yurt, in the hunter's camp, in my camp in general, I put it in the shade. Every couple days, I'm just going to come and I'm going to shake it. And if I see I got a leak, like I just saw some liquid come out of there, then I'm just going to press that wax down in there a little bit better to make sure that doesn't happen. And then shake it up. Every couple days, like I said, just let it sit. And when I'm done... The liquid that I'm going to use is going to strain, I'm going to strain it off of this, but because I just put whole leaves in there and didn't really macerate it too much, I can just use this jar if I want to for my medicine jar. Pull the cork off of it, put that rinse on a bandana or directly on my skin, rub it in with a bandana and then pull the bandana off and let it evaporate and dry at the same time to help take care of that poison ivy. So I can make medicinal tinctures with this alcohol as well. So now... I have a very multifunctional item that's not going to take a lot of room up in my pack if I want to carry a pint in a plastic container like this because I have an accelerant, I have a fuel, I have a disinfectant, and I have something that I can use for medicines as well. So there's four really, really simple uses for grain type alcohols. And I think that's a good reason to think about in your longer term type pack carrying moonshine or liquor. Okay guys, I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. Appreciate you joining me for another video out here. I appreciate everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my affiliates, friends, and sponsors and instructors. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.